Hello and welcome to the John Ark Show. Today, we're going to interview actress Marta Kristen, who starred as Judy Robinson in Lost in Space. She's also starred in Beach Blanket Bingo and many other movies and TV shows. Before we begin, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our free channel. We also encourage you to like, comment, and follow us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great celebrity interviews coming up, so I encourage you to click on the notification bell so you can get notified every time we upload a new episode. I'd also like to tell you about Hollywood is Calling. Com. It's a great service that allows you to purchase live phone calls with more than 100 celebrities. So give it a try. Hollywood is calling.com. Now let's say hello to the great Marta Kristen. Hello, Marta. Welcome to the John Ark Show. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm well. How about you? I'm doing really good. Happy to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet so, uh, you know, we talked to a lot of people about you. And they all say the same thing. They say you're extremely professional, very polite, and a pleasure to work with. Uh, you seem like you've lived your life with a lot of dignity and respect. And in this day and age, uh, that is very rare. So I want to begin by commending you for a life well lived. Thank you. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, that's very uh, nice. It's very nice to hear. So we did some research and we found that you were originally from Norway, but adopted and moved to Michigan by your parents. Uh, it looks like you actually lived in Farmington, Michigan. Is that correct? That's right. Yes. The heart of the, well, sort of the heart of the Midwest, a little bit north. Yeah. Do you, did you live there for, for a few years or how long did you live there? Well, I lived there. I, I came to America when I was five mm -hmm. from an orphanage in Norway. And um, I had, um, I was very, very fortunate to be adopted by, by Harold and Bertha Soderquist. They mm -hmm. were both teachers. My father was a professor of philosophy and my mother was a school teacher. Uh, very, very kind, wonderful, smart people uh, surrounded by uh, writers and, and, and um, poets and, and artists of all, all different stripes and, and um, so to speak. <laughs> and um, so I, I really had a very enriched childhood being around uh, them and around uh, uh, their extraordinary friends. Um, and, and Farmington was a great place to grow up in. I, I'm, glad, I, I'm glad I grew up there. We went to Detroit and we would go, um, my father would take me to all different, uh, well, churches and synagogues. And I mean, he, he wanted me to have an understanding of religion. And, and um, so, yes, <laughs> that's where I was raised in Farmington. Don't get me started. <laughs> it, it's, I asked that because at one time I lived in Farmington and, uh, you know, I lived in several cities in Southeast Michigan. And, you know, we used to go to the farmer's market and, and all that stuff. So I, I'm familiar with that. Yeah. Um, so at what point did you decide to move to California? My father took a sabbatical and my mother from teaching uh, when I was uh, 15. Mm. And um, we came out to California and uh, almost 16. So I was in Michigan for about 10 years, not very long. Uh, and uh, my, my, my father to write a book on Kierkegaard. On what? Uh, on what? On, on Kierkegaard, the life of Kierkegaard, or his okay. teachings, uh, which was eventually used as a textbook called "The Person and Education." Um, at any rate, I uh, I was here in California, in Southern California, and actually uh, staying with my aunt in Pacific Palisades, uh, my whole my 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 parents, my brother, and myself. And um, I was approached by a man in a restaurant, Zuki's, a delicatessen. It was James Harris, the producer of Lolita. Mm. And he asked me if I was interested in acting. I said I had never been interested in anything else, which was true. And he, 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 wanted, he wanted me to know uh, that he would, be, he would love to uh, meet my parents and talk about uh, the um, you know, book, Lolita, and have us all read it before we, uh, we met. And you were how old at this point? I was just turned just turned 16. And did you have an agent at that point? No, I didn't. Okay. But uh, Mr. Harris was so wonderful. He um, he for some reason believed in me and and uh, he he even though we I, 
obviously didn't do Lolita. Um, he introduced me to an agent and one of the top agents in Beverly, in, in, in Hollywood. And, and uh, she, she was in Beverly Hills and Lillian Small, wonderful older woman. I say older, she was probably my age or younger, but um, she was just delightful and took me under her wing. And, uh, and I started working right away. Did you ever find out why he chose someone else for the role? My parents said no. Oh. <laughs> my parents said no. Lolita, no. Uh, they didn't think it would be healthy, um, but they knew how disappointed I was. And so they did continue to uh, help me with theater and dance and voice. And um, I, uh, I took lessons. Well, I've been taking lessons all my life. I continue to take lessons. Really? And, what are you studying? Oh, I study dance. I st um, always have been uh, studying dance. Uh, um, I, I, I con constantly take acting classes. I've been with a group called the Ruskin Theater Group, and mm -hmm. they have the most wonderful classes. It's a Sanford Meisner technique. I had studied Stanislavski for years and years, but the Meisner really opened me up and... Um, because, uh, well, I had done, I started a theater company called West Coast Ensemble I, I, with a group of people. I was a founding member and I love, love theater. Love it. Love, nothing like a live audience to make you, uh, make you sweat. I often, before I go, go out on, a, uh, on the stage, I go, I think, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I'm so terrified. But the moment I'm on, 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 on my feet, are in and in, in the uh, in, in on the stage and and the I know the audience is there, loving me, wanting to know what I have to offer. I am just set. I just fly. Are you a Pisces? I am. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah Pisces engage people very, very, uh, very easily. Uh, people. Uh, you know, they're very charming and very disarming. And so wherever people, wherever a Pisces goes, she immediately, he or she immediately attracts friends. It's, it's very, it's very. Uh, I didn't know that. Because I'm, I'm, I'm actually shy and in, I in, used to be. I used to be terribly shy. Yeah. So my father, it, would say, my father would say, Marta, stand, you know, stand straight when you walk into a room, you know. But I, I the orphanage, I think, made me very. Um, vulnerable. And so you, know, was, you know, Marilyn Monroe spent her early life in an orphanage. And um, that process, that experience does something to a young soul that causes them to want to pursue something far greater in their lives. And, you know, Marilyn did and, and you did. So I think there's something about that process that, uh, that affects people very profoundly early on. Um, is it true that, uh, that one of your earliest uh, acting jobs was uh, on Alfred Hitchcock Presents? And, and if so, what was it like working with Alfred Hitchcock? Yes, it was a, a show called Bang Your Dead with Billy Mooney, who was also in Lost in Space. I was, um, I, I was 16, I was 16 or 17 maybe. And um, <laughs> yes, he, he was, uh, you know, so brilliant. And uh, I was in such awe of him I was terrified of him mm -hmm. and I would sit like maybe mm, 10 feet away from him and in a chair and I would just stare at him and I knew he knew I was staring so he'd look over at me and I'd turn turn away and um uh I, I, I he, he he never got up out of his chair he, people would come to him, of course, and uh, he knew exactly what he wanted. He was very precise. There was no, no messing around. He, he gave me no direction. I just simply did what I, I, I mean, I ha had auditioned, so he knew I could do it. And, um, but Bill Mooney tells a story, um, and he tells it very well about, um, uh, he called him over, Mr. Hitchcock called him over and whispered in his ear and I saw Bill and his eyes just got huge and I I said to him later what Bill what did you, what did he say to you he said if I don't start stop moving around I'm going to nail your feet to the ground <laughs> well everyone has a way <laughs> yeah. so in 1965 you got 
everyone's attention in a movie called Beach Blanket Bingo. Oh, even, wow. even the name alone is very unique. And you played a mermaid. How difficult was it to film those scenes in the ocean? <laughs> well, because I was probably the only person in the ocean uh, throughout most of the filming, uh, it was cold. It was so cold. I, um, there was one point where I, I was in the water and I'm supposed to be looking up and I'm, I'm using my hands to stay up. I, I'm a very good swimmer, but the waves were coming and they, and I, you know, so I would catch them on the side of my eye, my peripheral vision, and I'd see one come and go, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> and I just, I would just paddle more and try and stay up. And, um, I had a pair of pasties on, which was weird, and, and they fell off. I didn't care. I just wanted to save myself. And and I and the director, um, oh, what was his name? Oh, uh, I'll think of it. Uh, a famous famous director. Anyway, he called out, "Marta, smile!" <laughs> As I tried to save myself in a very very cold November yeah. water, uh, uh, Pacific Ocean water. Uh, uh, situation. It was, but that's, you know, that's show business. <laughs> so uh, later in 1965, your career really took off when you started as Judy Robinson in Lost in Space. Did you have any idea that this show would have the cultural impact that it did? Or did you just think this is going to be a fun science fiction show? I wasn't sure. I uh, frankly, um, because I was doing a lot of theater and, and uh, I, 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 you know, I, and I had done every show, almost every show except combat on television. I had done a two-parter called Four Feet in the Morning about abortion, a, a teenage pregnancy and abortion and teenage marriage. And um, I mean, it was a very heavy duty piece. And, uh, and my goal was really to, to end up going to New York and doing theater there, going to school there. Um, so at first I said, no, uh, no, I don't. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do this piece because I, what I feel is that I'll get lost in the crowd. Even though I loved science fiction, I mean, I read every science fiction book you could you could give me. But then, I began to think about it, and Irwin kept calling me and my agent, and um, Marta, you have to do this. And I said, you know, I'm being really stupid. I, I'm. I, I should. This is a, a chance of a lifetime to be a part of this uh, amazing uh, uh, adventure series, a family adventure series. And so I finally said, okay, I'll do it. And it's funny because Irwin, if I know, if I knew Irwin, uh, he, he probably wanted me even more because I said, no, he was very, he was very uh, feisty that way. And um, anyway, I, I was very lucky to be a part of it. And oh, each, I, each time he called you back, was he increasing his offer or just trying to persuade you? No, he was just trying to. Oh, I said, well, what about, you know, I'm going to be lost and, and there's so many people in the show and I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to get, you know, I'm part of a mix. He said, no, no, you're going to be, you're going to be this act. You, you had wanted to be an actress and, you know, instead you're up in space. So we have all kinds of ideas, for, you know, where you're going to be, you know, quoting Shakespeare, Lady Macbeth. And I thought, well, that's fun. I like that. That's a good handle for me. And um, uh, so, you know, he would, he would promise me all these things. And, and of course I, uh, and then eventually I said, yes, but I do want to say that the first day of work, it was like 5.30 in the morning and I was driving into uh, 20th Century Fox and the sun was just coming up and the air smelled so good. I, I, I was almost the only person on the road and I thought to myself, here I am, a girl from an orphanage and I'm going to do a television series at 20th Century Fox. How interesting my life has been. Did you was, feel like fate had really turned in your direction and started propelling you forward? Did you have that feeling in the air? Yes, I did. I yeah. did. And, and, um, and I just loved the people I was working with. I mean, we all, we were like family. We all really got along well. Uh, you know, Lost in Space, Steven Spielberg movies, 
Disney and, and even companies like McDonald's, they all have one thing in common. They win children over at a very early age. And then these kids, they grow up and they continue to be fans and customers for life. Whenever I watched Lost in Space as a child, my mother would always make you know, me a great home cooked meal. And to this day, whenever I see the words lost in space, I can still taste her meals. Whenever I go to conventions, uh, that's one of the one of the first things people say to me is, I remember when I was a child and I would sit in front of the TV with with my family or by myself, and I was transported into this amazing situation where you are all dependent on each other and uh, without without each other you can't you can't possibly survive and of course all of the the special effects which were which have changed radically since then with cgi but but um with people say that it meant so much to them to be with their family or to see a family show, a family adventure series that um, that that depended that 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 really had uh, a strong sense of of um, of unity and intimacy uh, in 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 a very kind and good way. So it, it, people miss that. They 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 miss that. Um, uh, with with so much going on, so much stimuli constantly in people's heads, you know, just to have those few quiet, that quiet hour with with a group of people that they feel they know and that are their perfect family. You know, there's something really magical about the ages of one through 10. Uh, a child's heart is open, it's welcoming, it's optimistic, it's curious. And when you direct content or a product at that young heart, at, the, at those young minds, it really connects profoundly. And uh, you know, it's a lifelong connection a lot of the time. Um, tell me about Erwin Allen, because he did a lot of the great shows uh, that were on television in the 60s. You know, Voyage to the Bottom, you know him better than I, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, Lost in Space. He really was you know, representative of 60s television. Did you, did you spend a lot of time talking with him? What, what, what was he like? Erwin was almost childlike in a way that he had, even though he was an Oscar winner prior to, to the work that we had done uh, and the series of, you know, the, the, all the series that he ended up doing, um, he, 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 knew, he, he actually zeroed in on just what you're talking about is what does a child between one and 10 say? What, what do they want to see? What do they feel? How, how, how are they going to um, uh, be enriched by, by the stories I'm telling? And also uh, be fascinated by, by what, uh, I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm bringing in, the monsters and the, and, and the spaceships and the suits and, and uh, the, you know, the talking plants and all of that. Uh, he was able to actually, actually connect attach somehow to, to that child's imagination. So that um, like I would watch children watch the show and they would, their eyes would just get bigger and bigger and, and, and they were enthralled by, by what they were seeing. So Irwin, I think had that on, on the other side, he was a very, um, aggressive, very uh, get go, let's, you know, time is money, come on. He was a producer. He, he, he was worried about uh, overtime. He, he fired directors who took too long to, to make, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the seven day uh, show um, that while well, we filmed seven days. And uh, he didn't, yeah, I mean, there was one director who I just loved and he fired him because of that. And it was too bad because he did such great work. Um, but time is money. And that's what Irwin was about. He, he would come to the set and he would um, take a tin uh, or a metal waste paper basket and he'd hit it with a hammer and he'd say, all right, let's get going. So there was that, that side of him. So you guys worked seven days a week for the entire season? Seven days. Well, no, no. We would work five and two. 
it would take us seven days to do uh, during the week, a five, five week day, five day week, weekday, and then two days of uh, another, I mean, well, you know, and then f- in other words, it took seven days to make the show, seven work days. So in Lost in Space, there were a lot of great outdoor scenes, you know, whether somebody mm-hmm. flying a jetpack or driving the chariot, where were those scenes filmed? They were filmed, most of them were filmed in the desert. However, we were always on the set. Those were the all second unit, um, second unit work. And um, we, um, we were on set most of the time, which killed me because I'm a very outdoors person and, and I love, love horseback riding and hiking and always having, uh, I'm always out, I'm as out, outside as much as I, I can possibly be. So we also heard that you had a bit of a crush on one of your, your cast members, actor Guy Williams, who played your father, Professor mm-hmm. John Robinson, on the show. Did you ever tell him that you liked him? And if so, how did he react? Oh, I was so overwhelmed by his, his um, well, I, Zorro had been my favorite show. Right. And uh, when I was young. And so uh, <laughs> I, 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 wouldn't dare. I was so shy. I, I, I didn't dare say anything to him about it. But he and June taught me how to play Scrabble, a killer Scrabble. And uh, so we would have these, uh, you know, long Scrabble games. And uh, it was it was just wonderful. And and he 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 um, he would play um, classical music, for instance, in his in his. Uh, uh, in his little trailer, in his well, he had a bigger trailer than we did, but uh, um, and and he he was just a, such a gentleman and uh, such a uh, a warm uh, person. I, I don't know why I was scared of him, but I was I yes I I did I adored him. <laughs> Do you think he sensed that you had a crush on him, but he just he never acknowledged it because he was was he married at the time? I'm assuming he was. Oh yeah, married to one of the most beautiful women you will ever meet. Uh, she just had her birthday. I think it was her 91st birthday. So, yeah, yeah. Um, how life-changing was that show for you? How dramatic was its impact on your personal life and on your professional life? Well, during that time, I got married. And, and um, you know, people were different then. You didn't have – the only time that I had people follow me around was uh, when I went to New York City for a convention, for a CBS convention. And <laughs> I was walking around the city and there were a group of people and they were like following me, you know, and I would stop and they would stop. <laughs> and I would go into a place, they would wait until I came out and then they would follow me again. And I finally went back to the hotel and they all came up to me en masse. And they said, oh, Miss Kristen, may I have an autograph? And I said, oh my gosh, of course. I was, you know, I was thrilled. And, um, but, but nowadays, I, I mean, I, I know that it'd be different. Um, but I, it's funny, I still have people, like for instance, I, I lecture at church and, and uh, I have people come up to me afterwards and say, oh, you're Marta Kristen. Oh, I, I recognize your voice. <laughs> so uh, it, it's strange how, uh, uh, and people still say, I, I know you from somewhere. I, I know you from somewhere, <laughs> even though it's been 50 over 50 years. So this is where things get really interesting. After the show ended in 1969, you were pregnant with your first child and you decided to travel to Europe to find your long lost relatives. Now you succeeded in finding your biological mother in Finland. And you also discovered that you had an older sister that you didn't know about. How did you track them down? Did you have to hire a private detective to find them? No, actually, um, I was, uh, I, I received a telegram through 20th Century Fox and, and it uh, was from my sister saying, you don't know me, but I believe you are my sister, my, my birth sister. And um, because I had done an article in a magazine um, uh, with a, F- a Finnish uh, journalist and uh, my, 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 my birth name, Birgit Annalise Rusanen, was in the article and her name was Anneli Rusanen. And, and uh, she, uh, I immediately 
said, yes, yes, I would love to meet you. I'm going to come to Europe and I'm going to bring my parents with me. And uh, my uh, then husband didn't want to step foot out of uh, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So um, I thought, well, I'll travel by myself. First, I'll start with my parents and then I'll... Uh, we'll go to Finland, and and I met um, my family. My I have actually, and I found other. My Anneli found more more brothers and sisters, um, so and, take, and having take, nine nine take, siblings. Take me to the moment where you walk into that meeting with your mother, and you lock eyes. You see your biological mother for the first time face to face. What's going on? What are, you, what are you thinking? What's the conversation like? Did you guys bond immediately or was it awkward? Was it, what, what, was that, what was that moment like? It was as if I were in a fog and I just looked at her and she looked at me and we both, oh, I, I get anxious thinking about it. We don't have to discuss this if you. No, want. no, that's all right, because I th I've written a book about something similar. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's about you know that your parents that you love, who have raised you, who have taken care of you, who have always been there for you, who have enriched your life, who have wiped away the tears. And 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 in, made you laugh and and love that that um, they're they're your real parents, and she was a woman who gave birth to me. I was curious about her. I but frankly, my connection with my brothers and sisters, I felt a stronger connection with them. My mother, I think, was in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. So it was sort of an odd thing. She looked at she and she started crying. My mother, Bertha Soderquist, started crying. <laughs> mm. I didn't cry. I just sort of watched her and looked at her and thought, who's this woman? Then I went up to her and I asked Anneli to come over because Anneli spoke five different languages. And I said, Anneli, would you tell her that I forgive her? That she gave me life, true life, in that I ended up in Michigan, ended up with this amazing family, amazing parents, and, and that she gave up herself to do that because it must have been very, very painful and, um, for her. And, and uh, I would say that to all adopted children, that how lucky they are to be put in, in, to be brought into a loving home. Did you feel like maybe you were betraying or disrespecting the parents that raised you by going to visit your biological mother? Or was it purely uh, a, an exercise of curiosity to see what this woman was like? No, I, that's why I took my parents. My right. parents came with me because my, Harold and Bertha came with me because I wanted, I wanted uh, to, um, to have them experience with me because they were so much a part of me. I wanted them to experience meeting Helmi and uh, my birth mother. And, um, and it ended up being very joyous, actually. The, the, the connection that I have with my sisters and, and, uh, my, and, my, and my brothers. I, I, I found a, uh, an amazing man, Seppo Rusanen. Uh, he's my brother. And it, we're like twins separated at birth. And he lives in Australia. Uh, he, uh, he worked uh, um, uh, for one of the Wilhelmsen line um, uh, in, at, at the, um, um, in the Sydney Harbor. And whenever the sh huge ships would come in, he would have to take over. And, and, he, he, and he's still, I mean, he's amazing. We, we constantly write to each other. Now, at this time, at the time of the meeting, did you, uh, did your brother and sister realize that you were a world famous actress at this point or did they not know that yet yes they they knew that yes um so were you able to uh to begin you know an ongoing relationship with your 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 biological mother and sister and brother uh, or was it sort of you know awkward 
Oh no, I kept I kept in touch with Anneli, Anneli, especially Anneli. Um, uh, uh, I, I didn't I didn't continue with my mother. She, as I said, got worse and worse as she experienced as she went further into her Alzheimer's. Um, I did go see her in the hospital when she was um, dying, and um, and uh, you know that was very 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 difficult. But Anneli, Anneli was so wonderful. Anneli um, passed away just after my husband passed, actually, and shortly after he passed. And um, she, she was the light. She would come here to California, and she would, she would walk. She was a teacher, and she would walk all over my neighborhood and went to the school. They wouldn't let her go into the classroom, but she got to know everybody, all the all the administrators at the, administrators at the school. <laughs> she was a light. I mean, she was just the one of the most amazing people you would ever want to meet. I always told her she she needed to have a um, you know like a a, a tourist carrying a, a a tourist a tour leader carrying a flag because <laughs> she was so she just brought people together. Did your and sister and brother resemble you? No, no, none of us. I have a um, a sister who Marietta, who Anneli found, and uh, she is my full sister. We look more alike than anyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is half half brother, half sister, but Marietta uh, and I look alike. So and the, the universe is very interesting. Your biological mother gives you up for adoption, and then years later. When you reunite with her, you're pregnant with your first child. It's almost as though the universe is using childbirth to try and rekindle your relationship with each other. Is that how you felt or is that, uh, is that how, not how it was? You know, that's crossed my mind often that, um, it's, it, that I was pregnant, that I go there when I'm pregnant and um, uh, meet family that I'd never met before, but they're, we're all biologically connected. Um, then I went and traveled for two months in Europe by myself, traveling on a train with a Eurail pass. I would meet friends occasionally here and there, but uh, and then uh, and I would connect with people. Uh, I went to Germany. I mean, you know, all the way through. Um, you know, I'm half German, and um, I, I, I've written about that. I, I would like to find my German father, and. Um, uh, <sighs> That's a whole nother, another issue. I, I, I've started by bi a biography and the beginning of it is that, um, you know, the, uh, the parents' sins are visited on the children. And uh, you, they called me, the, like, for instance, they called, some children called me when they found out I was German in Norway in the orphanage. They called me the Nazi child. Of course, I had nothing to do with, do with the Nazis and, and, and the hideous, horrendous, destruction and, and hatred that they spewed on so many people. Um, but it wasn't all the German people and, and I certainly wasn't part of it. But, uh, and my, my father was not, he was, uh, he was a, a mechanic of uh, airplanes and he was put into service to fly at the end of the war because they, they lost all their, um, you know, they, their pilots. So um, Hans Bremer, B R it's a, it's spelled like Bremer, but it's Bre it's it's pronounced Bremer, and um, I, I would like to find find him someday because I know he must be quite his family must be quite how, something. How old do you think he is now? Oh, he passed. He he died at the end of the war, and that's why um, uh, Helmi. Well, she there's a whole other story with Helmi taking me to Norway. Now you have a daughter and a granddaughter. Did they ever get to meet your mother or your sister? They did. And um, yes. And uh, we went to, um, we went to Australia to meet my brother, Seppo. Anneli came here. Um, I'm trying to think, did Laura, I'm trying to think if Laura went, I know, yes, Laura and my husband, went, Laura, our daughter, and my husband went to, um, to Finland and uh, to, to meet everyone. And, and it was quite extraordinary. 
Lena was too young. Lena hadn't been born yet then. Now, uh, you also appeared in the Lost in Space movie. How was that experience? Did it bring back a lot of memories? And were they good memories? Well, I preface it by saying that my mother had just died. And oh. my mother had just been, you know, my best friend. And, and uh, aside from my husband. And uh, so it was difficult for me. But the beauty of that trip was connecting with Angela again as adults. And she was so kind and compassionate. Um, and uh, when I got on set, I, I, I was having some, some trouble, you know, just, just, and she just came, you know, put her arm around me and said, how are you doing? And um, she was so compassionate and loving and, and, uh, and that's who she is. So that was the best part of the trip. Um, and William Hurt, I loved William Hurt and, and he was rather flirtatious with me. So I felt that that was sort of fun. <laughs> he wrote me a nice, a lovely, he gave me flowers and sent me a lovely note. And, and um, so that was nice. Now, I, this is just pure speculation on my part, but I, my theory is that at some point years ago, you sat down both your daughter and your granddaughter in front of a television set, and you probably showed them lost in space. If that happened, tell me what their thoughts and perception were of seeing their mother on the screen. Well, it's interesting because my daughter had, was, ex I mean, she is so beautiful. I mean, high, high cheekbones and very almost, I mean, very European looking, exotic. And uh, she had been asked if she wanted to be an actor. And she, and she had, uh, she did one show and she said she hated it so much. Now my granddaughter on the other hand is also exquisite. And she, she loves acting. She starred in every school play. So watching me on television, I think in a way, it was a catalyst for my granddaughter to say, that's really what I want to do. And uh, my daughter said, you were great. You were just wonderful, mom. And, um, and, and they're so supportive of me and so, so wonderful that um, I, I can't help but feel that when they, when they were watching it, they, they were thrilled. Yeah. Thrilled on my behalf. And how did you feel watching them watch you at that <laughs> point? I, well, I, just the way I reacted now, I laughed and, you know, and I was a little worried. But, uh, you know, they're, they have been to every single play I've been in and watched come multiple times. And um, so they've seen me act in other things. But, uh, yeah. But, but they understand. Have either of them ever come to a convention with you and watched the, the effect that you had on your fans? Yes, Lena. Lena has been my sidekick at a couple of conventions. And um, she's, she takes the money and says, hello. And, and she, I think she sees how important it is to treat people and to talk with them with, with respect. And, uh, and, but she could charm the birds out of the trees. She's, she's, Lena means light. And she is that she, she is light wherever she walks, wherever she goes, she connects with people. So what are the ages of your, your daughter and granddaughter and what are their astrological signs? Well, uh, Laura, I uh, rather say, and uh, <laughs> she's, uh, she's a Scorpio. Okay. And uh, Lena is uh, just turned 26, and uh, she is November, November. Um, oh, um, the scales, the uh, oh. scales. Yes. Okay. All right. And well, as you look back on your life, what's given you more happiness? Was it working in the entertainment business or being a mother? Uh, they're so separate. It's apples and oranges, really. Um, I, I think... You, it, doing one helps the other, you know, being a parent certainly makes, makes you deeper and, um, and understand more understanding about 
you know, other things outside of yourself. So, because you have to, you're, it's, it's demanded of you that you have um, this uh, connection, this whole new connection, not just to this child, but to the world and how you're going to help them, you know, go through the trials and tribulations and the, of this journey through their life and hopefully, you know, hold them up when they need it, and then let them go when, 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 when they need to be free. And um, so as, a, as an actor, the more experience you have, the, 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 the more you can give um, to, to your performances. And, uh, and, I, and I have to say, I was married, I was with my husband 43 years, and that too, you know, you're having a relationship with someone where you stand with them, you know, throughout your life or a good part of your life. And, you know, you battle and you, and you then you make, make up and, and, um, and, but they also, you know, are very much a part of that parenting and, you know, and doing it together and battling quietly about, you know, what are you going to say? What are the limits? What are the boundaries uh, that, uh, you know, you're going to give this child? If you don't mind my asking, uh, are you a vegan or a vegetarian? Mostly. You know, because you don't seem to be aging at all. It's, it's oh, a thank you. Thing. Well, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. So before we wrap things up, is there anything that you would like to promote? Well, I'm, I'm, uh, as I said, I, I've written a children's story called Birgit's Dream. Mm -hmm. And it's about what a child, me, at age three, wants when they are in the orphanage. And uh, it's, uh, it's really about what every child needs. And that is safety, that is tenderness, that is love, that is, you know, um, to be clean, to be, to be warm, to, to have someone look over, watch over you. Um, Angela was supposed to uh, do the um, do the illustration, but she illustration for my book, but she um, uh, decided to do a book uh, uh, something else. And um, even though she's a wonderful illustrator uh, and and very lyrical, so I I'm an artist. I've done this painting behind me. I, I've done a lot of painting actually, and um, so I said I can do that. Why not? So I'm I have. I have the story done, but it's but I only have done two illustrations so far. But they're all oil paintings, and uh, so, and I am doing my my um, my neighbor's uh, name is Vernon Wells. He was in the Mad Max movie. I just interviewed Vernon Wells oh, not too long ago. You're kidding, isn't he? Really, really, really nice guy. Oh, he's the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to do a piece uh, for he and his, his uh, producing partner last year mm -hmm. and just before the pandemic. And so I went up North and, and played this healer, this in the thirties. And, and, uh, and it, I had like a four page monologue. And um, after I did it, they said, we want you in everything we do. Yeah. So I'm doing three productions with him. And then there's a TV series, uh, which I can't talk about really, but uh, it's spectacular. The writing is just amazing. So I'm hoping that that will come through. Um, See, that's that Pisces effect. Pisces hypnotize everybody they come in contact with. So oh. <laughs> I'm sure that's a part of it. Well, listen, it has been a real pleasure talking with you. I want to wish you continued success. And thank you for being so generous with your time and tell you that you are always welcome back on the show. Well, thank you so much. And I was so worried about what am I going to talk about? <laughs> you oh, are no, great. So you're a great interviewer. I appreciate thank you. it. Well, you're, you're a great person to interview. You really are good. Um, well, listen, thank you for coming on the show. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview as much as we did. I want to thank our viewers for watching and tell you that we're going to have more great celebrity interviews and more breaking news stories coming up in the, in the near future. So we want to encourage you to subscribe to our free channel, click on the notification bell to get notified every time we post a new story, and just uh, enjoy the show in general. Thank you for watching, and we will see you soon.